Well, good morning, and thanks so much for joining me today. Hope you're all having a great start to your morning. Recently, I heard a quote that just stopped me in my tracks. I don't know if you ever have this experience when you're you're reading a book or an article that you, you read this line, you read this quote, and it just kind of sticks with you. It just haunts you for a bit. You can't get it out of your mind. And, and the quote was from a pastor from New York named John Tyson. And this is how the quote goes. Tyson said this. He said, bored people have entertainment. Consumers have preferences. Religious people have rules. Busy people have lists. But missional people, that, that is those who are outwardly focused, they have stories. So let's, let's look at this quote one more time, briefly. He said, bored people have entertainment. In other words, bored people, they, they pursue entertainment. And, and we live in a nation, in a world in which so many people are just bored. And so looking to entertainment to just get them through the day. They're filling themselves more and more with distraction with entertainment. He says, what do consumers pursue? They pursue preferences. They have to have just the right scarf, just the right shoe, just the right countertop, right? So if you're a consumer, what do you pursue more than anything? Preferences. Religious people, what do they pursue? They pursue rules. Those who look to their own piety, it's the means of their value and their worth, what do they pursue? They they pursue rules that they can follow. He said, busy people, they have their lists. Busy people have their to-do lists that they can check off over and over again. But he says, missional people, those who are outwardly focused, those who long to see other people come to know Jesus, those who love to serve others in tangible ways, they have stories. And do you know anyone like that? Do you know anyone who who just always seems to have a new story of a way in in which God used them or a way in which they were able to to help someone else in a a tangible way? People who say things like, yeah, you know, the other day I was driving and and I I saw someone on the side of the road, a woman who had a flat tire, and so I, I pulled over to help her and over the course of our conversation, I, I, I realized that I actually went to college with her brother. And then I, I learned that she's recently divorced, and I was able to share a, a bit with her about my divorce from years past. And I was able to connect her with some resources that were really helpful for me when I was walking through my divorce. And I found out that she's not currently attending a church, and so I invited her to our church, and she's coming to church on Sunday. Do you know anyone like that who just has stories like that, in which, which God uses them, or which God positions them at the right place at the right time, and they're willing to step out and take a risk and so be used by God. Or, or do you know anyone who has stories like this? You know what? Well, I saw that my neighbor, I saw that my neighbor is, is sick, and, and so I, I decided to bake her and her family a pie, and when I took the pie over, I, I learned that her, her mom is actually living with them right now, and her mom doesn't actually speak much English, and so I, I shared with them that I have a good friend who teaches ESL, English is a second language, and so her her mom actually started attending these ESL classes, and these ESL classes are at a church, and so she began to ask more and more questions about the church, and I, I just learned from my friend that she's actually attending that church now on Sundays. <laughs> there are some people that, that they're just, their lives just seem to be filled with stories of how God has used them and of how God has used the strangest of circumstances to connect them with the right people at the right time. And you know, Jesus, he lived a life that was full of stories, didn't he? I mean, if you read through the Gospels, it's just one story after another. Hey, Zacchaeus, I'm going to invite myself over to your house today. It's an amazing story. Or Jesus is at the well in Samaria, and he, in Samaria, and there's a woman there, and he begins to talk to her about her past husbands, and begins to talk to her about, about the true place of worship and the true heart of worship, that we worship in spirit and in truth. Story after story after story. That, that was the life of Jesus. Reminds me of, of John chapter 21, verse 25, which says this. 
Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. So John is saying here that Jesus' life was so filled with stories, which he was intentionally reaching out to serve others, intentionally stepping out and, and pointing other people to to himself or, or loving someone in a practical way. He just had so many stories that if all of them were written down, the, the world wouldn't be able to contain all the books that would be needed to store or house those stories. And, and so, you know, as we head into this new year, as we start out in this new year, a wonderful prayer to pray, and really a wonderful prayer to pray at any time is, is this, that, oh Jesus, would you give me stories? Would you give me stories? I want to be used by you. Jesus, uh, you are so acquainted with my weaknesses and with my flaws, but yet despite my flaws and weaknesses, would you help me to step out in faith? Would you give me stories? And, and that's even a prayer that you can pray every morning when you wake up. Jesus, today, today, right now, this Friday, or, or, or tomorrow, you know, this Saturday, would you give me a story? Would you give me an opportunity to serve in some practical way in someone else's life? And would you give me an opportunity to share with others the hope I have in you, Jesus. Would you give me an opportunity to tell others, Jesus, about you? Give me stories. Not so I can pat myself on the back. Not so I can, you know, just say to myself, well, oh, gosh, aren't I a, a faithful follower of Jesus? No, no, we want stories not so that we can grow our pride, but rather so that we might love others and point them to Jesus. Amen. Oh, Father, would you give us stories? that others might come to know you and that you might be glorified. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, and I'm, I'm praying that uh, God would give you some stories this week.